go. Thank you for joining the Dataversity webinar today. My name is Mark Horseman, Data Evangelist with Dataversity. We would like to thank you for joining the current installment of the monthly Dataversity webinar series, Real World Data Governance with Bob Seiner. Today, Bob will be discussing the data scientist's role in governance success. Just a couple of points to get us started. Due to the large number of people that attend these sessions, you will be muted during the webinar. If you would like to chat with us or with each other, uh, feel free to do so. Uh, for questions, we will be collecting them by the Q&A section. Uh, to find the chat and the Q&A panels, you may find the icons for those features in the bottom middle of your screen. As always, we will send a follow-up email within two business days containing the links to the slides, the recording of this session, and additional information requested throughout the webinar. Now, let me introduce to you our speaker for the series, Bob Siner. Bob is the president and principal of KIK Consulting and Educational Services, the publisher emeritus of the data administration newsletter, tdan.com. Bob was recently awarded the Dama Professional Award for significant and demonstrable contributions to the data management industry. Bob specializes in non-invasive data governance, data stewardship, and metadata management solutions. And with that, I will give the floor to my good friend, Bob, to start his presentation. Hello and welcome. Hey, Mark, how are you? Good to hear you. Good to see everybody. Can you hear me okay? Sure can. And just making so sure, because we had a problem last time that you can also see my screen changing? Yes, I can. Okay, I think we're good to go then. You know, after doing this for 150 episodes, or now 151 episodes, you'd think we'd have this down to a science. But, you know, we're uh, technology is a wonderful thing. Great to have everybody with us. Thank you for taking time out of your busy schedules to attend this live or to listen to the recording. I've been looking forward to this webinar. Uh, I... We'll talk a little bit about data scientists and the evolution of the term data science, uh, data scientist. Um, as I get started today, um, as Mark said, the name of this uh, this webinar is the data scientist's role in governance success. So, first of all, I'd like to start by saying I'd love to say that I have thirty years of experience of being a data scientist and being in data science. Although, if I said that, I'd be lying to you because. Just a little bit of trivia here for you to start the session. The term data scientist wasn't really invented or wasn't really started to be used, didn't start to be used until the year 2008. And it was done by uh, two guys, I believe they are guys, DJ Patil and Jeff Hammerbacher, who respectively worked for LinkedIn and Facebook. And these were the folks that were leading their data and analytics teams. And they thought that it was great that they would create a role within their organization that um, really helped and assisted them to deliver their data-driven approaches within their organizations. So I know I have a picture of a mad scientist on the front screen, uh, front page of the screen. Um, we'll, we'll talk about data scientists and whether or not you have, you're a data scientist or whether or not there are data scientists in your organization here in a second. But just to follow up from last month's webinar, which was we celebrated the milestone of the 150th webinar in the Real World Data Governance series, um, we announced that we were going to draw three lucky winners, and th those winners have been drawn. We're not going to name them in this webinar here, but I will be reaching out to the two that will be winning copies of the Non-Invasive Data Governance and Non-Invasive Data Governance Strikes Again books. So be on the lookout. If you were in attendance in last month's webinar, I'm going to be reaching out to two people and sending you copies of, um, of the book. Before I get started, there's a couple things I wanna share with you, some activities that I'm presently involved in. As you know, this monthly webinar series takes place on the third Thursday of every month. And we've been doing this webinar series for 12 years. Uh, this is the 13th year actually. Uh, but next month on the third Thursday of the month, we'll be talking about navigating the data jungle. We'll be talking about data catalogs, business glossaries, and data dictionaries, and going into a little bit of a deep dive as to how those three tools 
can help you to navigate through the data, the data jungle. Um, I talk a lot about non-invasive data governance. I wrote a couple of books on the subject of non-invasive data governance. Those are the ones that we will be giving away to those two lucky winners. Um, the first one was called Non-Invasive Data Governance, The Path of Least Resistance and Greatest Success. The second one was titled Non-Invasive Data Governance Strikes Again. And it's really 50 essays that talk about the use of non-invasive data governance in practice within organizations. I also have several learning plans that are available through the Dataversity Training Center. The first one on non-invasive data governance, second one on non-invasive metadata governance, because we know that the metadata won't govern itself. So we need to govern metadata as well. And then the third one, the one that seems to be pretty popular right now is the one that's addressing some of the topics we're gonna to talk about in next month's webinar, which is business glossaries, data dictionaries, and data catalogs. So the name of my consulting business is KIK Consulting and Educational Services. KIK are not my initials. My initials are BS, and I didn't wanna call myself BS Consulting. KIK stands for Knowledge is King, and so you can reach the home of non-invasive data governance through kikconsulting.com. And as I am known to say in my spare time, I, I am also an adjunct faculty member in the uh, executive education um, certificate program at Carnegie Mellon University here in my hometown of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And they just relabeled that cohort from the chief data officer certificate program to the chief data and AI officer program. So I'm going to talk a little bit about AI governance in this session as well. So let me get started by just uh, touching on the subjects that I'm gonna go over in this webinar. Um, first thing I'd love to see, and, and I have the chat up and running on in, in another screen in my office here. Um, I'd just be curious to see by show of hands or maybe in the chat session, um, type in I am. If you are presently a data scientist, within your organization. Just love to see if, if any of you or many of you actually have the title of data scientist. Um, and also how many of you have data scientists within your organizations? I've worked with a lot of different organizations and literally the first organization to include the role of the data scientist in their operating model is a present client that I'm working with. And it's more of a technology role than it is a business role. Again, we'll talk a little bit more in detail about the difference between a data scientist and a data steward as we go through the session today. But first thing I'm gonna talk about is looking at the things that data scientists do and seeing what aspects of what they're doing is already governance. I talk about, when I talk about non-invasive data governance, I talk about the fact that there's already governance taking place in your organization. We need to look to it. We need to consider formalizing it because it's most likely informal in a lot of organizations. So the first thing we'll do is look at some of the practices that are taking place in data science and recognize which ones of those are governance opportunities. Because again, we're looking to discover the data scientist's role in governance success. The next subject I want to talk about today is the data scientists versus data stewards. I'll talk a little bit about the evolution of the data scientist um, in, in that part of the, uh, the webinar today. Next thing we'll talk about is integrating governance into the data science life cycle. If there is such a thing as a data science life cycle or just a data life cycle, how do we integrate governance? How do we utilize the data scientists to integrate governance into that data life cycle? And then since data scientists and scientists in general are very smart people, they have a lot of expertise. They have a lot of knowledge. So I want to talk about how we can leverage their expertise for compliance and for regulatory requirements. And the last thing I'm going to do, if we have time, I expect that we'll have time, is walk through a couple of real world case studies of a financial institution, a healthcare company, a a technology company, a health, you know, a lot of different companies, how they are actually starting to apply data science and data scientists towards governance in their organizations. So before I get started, as I usually do, I want to run through a series of definitions that that of terms that I'm going to use throughout the webinar today, and the ones that I use throughout all the webinars that uh, that are part of this series. Um, 
my definition of data governance is worded really strongly. In fact, there's some people that cringe when they see the definition, because I say that data governance is the execution and enforcement of authority over data. And some organizations just tell me that's worded too strongly. But at the end of the day, no matter what approach you take to data governance, whether it's command and control or kind of the traditional, if you build it, they will come approach or non-invasive. At the end of the day, you need to execute and enforce authority over data. The government's not coming to you and saying, here, follow these rules um, if you'd like. And it's, it's a heck of a way to implement governance within an organization if you just put together guidelines and tell people, follow these if you like. The definition of data governance to me is the execution and enforcement of authority. I know it's worded strongly, but it's worded strongly intentionally. I also want to differentiate between data governance and AI governance. As you can see, my definition of AI governance, it's a pretty standard definition of AI governance. It is those frameworks and policies of procedures, standards, those things that are being established within organizations to guide their development and their use of artificial intelligence. So there is a difference between AI governance and data governance. We could do complete webinars on that subject. I'm not going to address that today, but there are certain, there's certainly a very close relationship between AI governance and data governance. Um, as most people probably see it, data governance is just a piece of the overall governance of an artificial intelligence effort. Data stewardship is the formalization of accountability for data. As I say, everybody in the organization that has a relationship to the data, if they're being held formally accountable for that relationship, they're a steward of the data. So it's not something that somebody can opt into or opt out of. There's different levels of stewards within the organization. Today, I'm gonna to talk about stewards in terms of relating them to what data scientists do. And can we really make data scientists into data stewards within our organization? So I'm just gonna share some ideas on those types of things. So of course, again, when we think about scientists or mad scientists, um, just wanted to, to kind of share that image with you as well. But here's the definitions that I've found for data. These are not definitions I've made up. They're actually combinations of definitions that come from multiple noted resources on this page. A definition for data science being an inter interdisciplinary field that uses methods and processes to gain insight from data, both structured and unstructured. Again, take a second and read through what basically the industry is telling us is the definition of data science. And then a data scientist being a professional who uses that uh, those skills and that knowledge in order to do analysis around data. So just like a, a typical scientist would do, this is the best image that I could come up with for, for a dissection. I want to dissect these definitions of data science and data scientists so that we can go into a little bit more detail. If you are not aware of what data science and data scientists are, uh, or what the definitions are within your organization. So like I said, data science is an interdisciplinary field. It is not, it, it is, it is for people that actually, the people that have the label and the title of data scientists, they're usually well-versed and well-skilled in scientific methods and processes and algorithms. They're a little bit different than the, the traditional data analyst within an organization. I guess this is a good time to talk about that evolution of the data scientist. Back in the early days, in, the, in my early days in the corporate world, which is years ago, it's many years ago, there were report analysts and there were report producers and they'd spent little time doing analyst analysis work and spent most of their time producing reports. And so those report the report, report producers became report analysts when they were being asked to analyze the data in the report. And then they became data analysts and data analysts again were there to analyze and assess and make um, recommendations and draw decisions from reports. Um, data science now has more of a method behind it. It, it. it is using things like scientific methods, processes, algorithms, those things. And these are being taught of students these days. It's not just an extension of a data analyst job. Data science is an interdisciplinary discipline that uses specific methods. So think about these people as being, being pretty darn technical for the most part within organizations. 
that's why I say I don't see them oftentimes becoming a key part of a data governance operating model unless you're bringing in the technology side of the operating model as well. Data scientists, as again, they said they're professionals that use the expertise that they've gained in statistic analysis, machine learning, programming to do analysis, processing, and, and modeling of data. And their job is still to extract that valuable insight from the data. So again, want to start with those basic definitions of governance, stewardship, AI governance, data science, and data scientists as just a way to get us starting for the context today. So the first thing that I said I wanted to talk about today truly was looking into the things that data scientists do and look to unearth, is I guess a good term for it, unearth the governance opportunities in the things that they do. And if you look at this, uh, this is going to be a, this screen will look similar. Uh, I'll be showing screens like this one a little bit later uh, as throughout the, the webinar today. The one thing that I wanted to draw out is that the name of this webinar is a data scientist role in governance success. It's not the data scientist role in data governance success. So we want to take into consideration both data governance and AI governance. And if we do that, you'll notice that a lot of the things when I start out talking about each of these different subjects, they're going to be grouped into categories. So the first one uh, is that we know that the data scientist practices involve ensuring data quality for the AI models. So we'll talk a little bit about implementing robust data governance practices to make certain that those models are of high quality. And the second one is ethical use. That seems to be, when you're talking about data scientists and their involvement in, um, in using AI models to make predictions and to, to use the data to make decisions, that the ethical use of the AI models comes into play quite a bit. So you'll see that I'll talk about that in terms of everything that we're talking about today as well. And then the last item on here is the transparency and accountability and the cross-functional collaboration. One thing that we've got to consider is that the data scientists are typically very busy in their job. So if we're going to ask them to actually start to become stewards or start to assure that the data that they're using for their data scientist stuff is well governed. So we want to first look to see what, what are they doing? And we want to then say, okay, what can we leverage from what they're presently doing and claim victory around governance or help them to formalize the way they're governing data around the work that they're doing. So like I said, you'll see that the first bullet is gonna be resonating through a whole bunch of the slides that I share with you today. The second bullet as well. And then the, the, the additional bullets on screens like this are kind of in the same vein. They're about to transparency and accountability. They're about collaboration. The last thing I want to point out on this slide is this statement right here, which says, including both data governance and AI governance. I'm not going to state that over and over again. I don't want to repeat myself too much, but you'll see that that one statement is going to be on every slide moving forward. It's just kind of in the background. I want to make certain that we're not just focusing on data governance, that we're focusing on AI governance as well. So when we're looking to the things that data scientists are presently doing. If you have data scientists within your organization, these are some of the things they're doing. They're ensuring quality, they're ensuring ethical usage of the data, transparency and accountability and the cross-functional collaboration. Well, I don't know if they're built into what data scientists do right now, but by the end of this session, I hope you're gonna see that they are very important in what people, uh, what the data scientists do. So again, when we're looking for opportunities in the existing data science practices, while well, we know that the data scientists are responsible for data quality within their AI models that they're building. So what are some of the things that they can do or some of the things that they could be doing if they're taking their role as stewards of the data, um, taking that on as well? Well, one of those things is to implement the validation process throughout the process of them developing their, their models to enforce consistent data standards across all sources, to regularly audit the data, to integrate uh, with automated data quality tools. The fact is these things are not gonna happen on their own. So when we talk about enforcing consistent data standards, that means that we as data governance practitioners need to be focused on making certain that the data standards exist. 
for making certain that we have processes in place for auditing accuracy and completeness. So again, what we're trying to do is figure out how we can leverage the things that data scientists do already to help them to recognize that what they are truly doing is, is, is helping to govern and how they can help to do that better for us to provide a better governed data and AI environment for our organization. As I said, data quality was the first thing that you'll see as a resonating theme throughout this webinar. The second one is ethical AI and data use. So again, we're looking for things that data scientists are supposed to be getting involved in, and we're making certain that they are being governed. So we need to make certain that the data scientists are well aware of the importance of implementing fairness and bias uh, uh, and unbiased um, models and data to the organization. So implementing techniques to assure that fairness and that there's that, that the data is not biased is something that the stewards need to get in, that the scientists need to get involved in. Ensuring transparency in the decisions, the decision making uh, process coming out of the AI environment and ad ad adhering to privacy and data um, regulations, all these things have to do with ethical AI and data usage. And the data scientists are pretty much engaged in these things on a day-to-day -day basis. At least if they're not, they should be. And we as data governance practitioners can help them to do these things. So if as data governance practitioners, we thought our job was done until AI came along, there's a lot of things that are AI are, there are demands that AI are making on data governance. And these are some of the things that the data scientists as quote unquote, stewards of the data or stewards of the decisions that are coming out of the data um, that they're gonna be responsible for. Transparency and accountability and data operations. So we wanna make certain that the data scientists in the things that they're doing, that they're documenting the data. As I mentioned at the very beginning of this webinar, the metadata will not govern itself. The data that's associated with data governance and AI governance is not going to document it Self either. So if it's not the practitioners, the people responsible for governance and stewardship that are doing that, we want to put some of that responsibility on the data scientists. So some of them already are pretty well versed at documenting their data sources and their processing workflows. Um, we need to help them to recognize that they that these folks that are data scientists play an important role and establish the clear data stewardship roles and differentiate between what a data scientist does and what a data stewardship does, or highlight for the organization where these are complementary activities or somebody can actually be a data steward and a data scientist at the same time. Now, other things they can do is implement audit trails for the data usage and for the AI model usage, regularly review and up, update governance policies these are all things that we could get our data scientists involved in. We don't need to go out and tag them on the shoulder and say, hey, you're a data steward now, start doing data steward stuff. No, you're a data scientist, but there's a lot of things built into what data scientists do that are actually governance around the data. So we've got to make that connection with them and help them to understand that by being data scientists, they are also being stewards of the data. Another thing that we oftentimes don't ask data stewards to do that, that's really required for the organization is to get them on board for providing this, this collaboration across different functions of the organization. One of my clients right now is setting up a specific AI, AI work group, and it's made up of data scientists where they're sharing ideas. They're communicating between scientists and between stewards. They're talking about different projects that are taking place in different parts of the organization. And as a goal from the top down, they're aligning data and AI goals with the business objectives of the organization. That's really step one for an organization is to make certain that the things that we're doing around data governance and AI governance are not are not random, that they are directly associated with the business objectives of the organization and promote and share responsibilities um, across the organization in terms of governance initiatives. So again, we're looking for things that data scientists do and we're gonna engage them um, and help them to understand that they truly play a role in the data, data life cycle from cradle to grave, from the beginning of the data being defined to the time the data is, is being produced for analysis to the time that the data has to be retired. 
we need to recognize what role data scientists play in that if they are going to play a role in that. Another thing I want to talk about is, again, the empowering the data scientists as data stewards. I've worked with a lot of organizations. I've developed a lot of operating models. I've given several webinars and presentations at Dataversity conferences on the data governance operating model. It's only recently that I've seen data scientist roles popping up within data, uh, data governance operating models. Oftentimes, I'm not going to I'm not going to share my operating model with you here. Perhaps I should have, but there are business roles roles that are typically on the right side of the operating model, and then there's more supporting roles that are on the left hand side of the operating model. Well, I'm starting to see the data scientist role show up in on the left hand side in the technical roles. There are often people that are within IT or they're business savvy folks that have a very strong IT and a very strong IT background. So now we're going to talk about um, empowering data scientists as data stewards and what are some of the things that we can do or what are some of the things that they're doing already that actually gives us a, an idea that they're acting as stewards within the organization. So we can get data scientists to lead the efforts to maintain high quality. We can empower them to enforce AI governance policies. But in order to do that, that means that we have to have the AI governance policies defined. So if you're gonna go back through this, this slide deck and you decide to use some of these statements, you might wanna underline those things in these, in these slides of things that need to be produced because organizations are now starting to talk about AI governance Maybe they've been doing it for six months, for a year, but we as data practitioners, we need to get involved in the AI governance policies. And so what, are, what, are, what, what is one of the way that, ways that we can empower data scientists as data stewards, which is to get them to understand, to get in, be involved in the development of, and to enforce the AI governance policies moving forward. Enhancing data transparency. Again, as I mentioned in the earlier slide that looked like this, the first bullet is associated with quality. The second one is the ethical practices. And then the third, fourth, and fifth bullets on this slide are all around the administration of governance. It's enhancing the transparency, making certain that the documentation is being documented, um, promoting cross-functional collaboration. Oftentimes it seems within, especially within large organizations, that data scientists tend to work in silos. If we can get them to create a learning community where they share with each other, we can help, we can get them to act as stewards by promoting that cross-functional collaboration and driving continuous improvement. So let's go through each of these items quickly. Just want to again share some ideas for ways that we can empower data scientists as data stewards within the organization. So that first subject was championing, championing data quality initiatives. And, and ways that we can get help them to do that, to empower them, is to get them to advocate for standardized data quality metrics and practices. Instead of just doing analysis and spitting out results, getting them to become more involved in the data science life cycle from cradle to grave. So get them to advocate for standardized data quality metrics, implement rigorous data validation throughout the process for developing their data and their AI models, promote continuous improvement of quality standards, collaborate on data cleansing and enrichment efforts. You know, we should be looking for ways to be able to empower these data scientists, whether we call them data stewards or not, there is a, a touch of truth to the fact that if they're being held accountable for the activities that they're taking, and those activities involve defining, producing, and using data, in my definition, I say that when we formalize that accountability for what they're doing, they become data stewards. So let's talk about empowering data scientists as data stewards by looking at getting them to help to champion data quality initiatives across the organization. Get them to implement ethical data AI practices. So make certain that the models that they're creating are free of bias and free of discrimination. Getting them to adhere to regulatory and ethical guidelines. I'm going to talk a little bit more um, in the last section here about adhering to regulatory and ethical guidelines. How can we get them to become advocates and champions and mark to steal from your title kind of evangelists for ethical AI practices within the organization? These are not just worker bees that are at the end of the, the food chain 
We need to get these folks, use their knowledge. We need to get them to adhere to the guidelines. We need them to ensure their models are free of bias. We need them to maintain transparency in the decision-making and certainly foster accountability through regular audits and reviews of the models and the data that they're working with. We can empower data stewards by enhancing data transparency. So implement clear documentation practices. You may have some of those within the organization. Those folks that are now filling the roles of data scientists, they may not be aware of what some of those documentation practices are or where that documentation will go or should go so that people can leverage it. So getting the stewards to act, or getting the scientists to act as stewards to enhance data transparency across the organization, that's just another way to get data scientists enrolled, or get them engaged in the success of your data governance program. And I mentioned, you know, right now it doesn't seem like a lot of data scientists, again, at least from my experience, that they're spending time collaborating across business units. So if we can get them to promote cross-functional collaboration and by fostering teamwork, by encouraging joint projects, all of these things that are listed on the screen, we can certainly start to engage them and empower those data scientists as data stewards for our organizations. And the last thing that I have under this subject of empowering data scientists is to get them to drive continuous improvement in governance. Again, they're not just people that are sitting at the end of the data food chain. These are people that have knowledge, have skills, are following prescribed methods for analytics, scientific methods. We can get them to help to drive continuous improvement just in governance in general, both in the data governance space and in the AI governance space. And how can we do that? We can implement feedback groups. We can encourage iterative improvements, monitor and refine the frameworks as necessary as we're implementing data governance frameworks across the organization and leverage data insights to inform you know, governance strategies and adjustments. These are folks that are day to day up to their elbows, up to their shoulders, up to their necks in data. And these are also people that for the most part, understand the data challenges that, that they need to, or hurdles that they need to get over in order to do successful um, data scientist stuff within the organization. Okay, the next subject, and then I wanna make certain I leave time to walk through the case studies quickly at the end and leave some time for Q&A as we typically do. I wanna talk about that data life cycle, that cradle to grave with the data. Again, data scientists, they seem to play a play an important role at some point of that life cycle, but they can also be engaged to help to integrate governance activities into all the different steps of the life cycle. So they can do it by ensuring quality from beginning to end, from ingestion to deployment, and you might even want to add to retirement of the data. When is data no longer valid? Um, we need to get the data scientists involved in those discussions as well. Um, embedding the ethical standards. Again, if you see those first two bullet points, data quality and ethical AI standards. And then the next two bullets, they focus mostly, again, on that administration of the things that data scientists are doing. Administration of the things that we are most importantly trying to get across in the formalization of governance practices. So documenting lineage and model decisions, you know, facilitating again that cross organization collaboration. And then I wanted to just share with you a whole bunch of ideas that I have around, well, how can we integrate governance into this data science life cycle? So making sure that we have stringent quality checks, establishing that continuous monitoring for data quality, enforcing the data validation protocol, and very important, <laughs> to maintain that comprehensive data documentation throughout the life cycle. From the time the data is being defined, the time the data is being produced, the time the data is being used, and the time that the data is being retired. So we need to integrate governance into all of the different steps of the data science life cycle. And again, as I said, that second bullet point, they all seem to be around ethical AI standards. So develop and enforce, enforce the ethical standards across all of the projects. We need to integrate that into the data life cycle, into the data li science life cycle that these data scientists are living day in, day out. Ensure transparency, regularly audit, 
promote accountability, there have some, some been some resonating themes throughout this webinar that we're focusing on quality, we're focusing on standards, we're focusing on documentation and working across the organization instead of working in silos. And again, documenting data lineage and model decisions. And again, there's some specific ideas as to how we can go about doing that. Tracking and recording the provenance of the data throughout its life cycle, maintaining documentation of the AI models, as well as the data models and the data to the data dictionaries and data glossaries and data catalogs that we're, that we're leveraging in order to build out our data governance programs to ensure transparency, facilitate audits, Again, we need to engage the data scientists in, in activities that are associated to governing success in both data governance and in AI governance. Whether or not you refer to these folks as stewards, that's really dependent on your organization. You may not want to muddy the water, so you may want to have a clear definition of how a data scientist differs from a data steward within your organization and be very specific as to what their responsibilities for. Facilitating the cross-departmental um, governance collaboration. Again, if we can get these folks, these data scientists to encourage joint data governance and AI governance, all of these activities that I'm talking about require some time and attention of the data scientists. Do they have that time? Are they bought into the, the need for governance? Well, maybe that's where we need to start in the organization is to kind of get them to get them on board with what we're doing from a governance perspective and help them to understand what role they play in the successful governance. So the last thing I want to talk about before I jump into those quick hit case studies at the end is something that I mentioned earlier, that the data scientist, my father was a chemical engineer scientist for a company for many, many years. I always looked at the scientists as being really smart people. That, and, they, and they are aware of things that we may not even be aware that they are aware of. But certainly they have expertise around compliance and regulatory requirements. If they don't, we need to make certain that they do have expertise around compliance and regulatory requirements. Again, how are they going to make certain that they're creating quality data, um, having data that is, uh, that having ethical AI and ethical data management? Well, it's gonna to be to leverage their knowledge or to help to educate them on the different aspects of compliance and regulatory requirements that impact them in their daily job. And as I mentioned, the last three bullets here, you know, or the last two really are comprehensive documentation and collaboration. These are things if we want to get our data scientists to play a more active role in governance success, it's going to be through these types of activities. Again, just want to share some quick ideas with you about um, how you can go about leveraging data science, data scientists expertise for these reasons. Um, one is to, again, leverage your data governance framework to proactively look for the types of risks that are going to be inherent in your AI systems, your AI models, your data systems, your data models. Implement AI governance to detect and mitigate um, algorithmic biases. Um, establish continuous monitoring, collaborate across divisions. Again, that's been a resonating theme throughout this webinar, which is you got to have that established continuous monitoring and you've got to get people who are data scientists not to just work within the vacuums of the data of the business that they know, but also to collaborate across the business. Get them to implement privacy preserving techniques. As we know, privacy is top of mind to every organization. Um, so they can apply privacy methods. They can use data in anonymization say that one 10 times fast, um, incorporate secure multi-party computation, do all of these things to uh, implement privacy in the work that the data scientists are doing to create the AI models, the data models, to make the decisions that they are based on the data and their knowledge of the data. Ensure ethical AI practices. I've talked about that quite a bit, establishing those guidelines for unbiased models, ensuring transparency, you know, auditing the models to make certain that whatever rules and whatever standards you're putting in place are being followed. And maybe most importantly, incorporating those, all of those ethical considerations into each step of the data lifecycle. 
into the collection of the data, the usage of the data, the getting rid of the data, all of those things. So you want to ensure that there's AI ethical or there's ethical AI practices taking place in your organizations. The data scientists are going to be right in front and center in those activities within your organization. I've talked about the importance of maintaining comp comprehensive documentation. As I've been known to say, I say the data will not govern itself. I also say the documentation will not govern itself. If it's not going to be the responsibilities of the, the data scientists to create that comprehensive documentation, then we need to make certain that that comprehensive documentation is still being documented. However, if they refuse to be the ones to do it, then we're going to need to recognize people to work with the data scientists to make sure that the data sources and the data transformation processes are appropriately documented, that maintaining the detailed records of the models, ensuring comprehensive documentation of policies and procedures, all of these things that are listed on the screen here. Collaborating, I talk about collaboration across the organization. Um, we can leverage their expertise. We can leverage their expertise with each other but we've got to get them to talk to each other. So again, data scientists can be very siloed, just like your data resources. But if we can start leveraging them more to the benefit of the entire organization, in order to do that, we may need to get them to talk to each other, learn lessons from each other, learn techniques from each other, learn the decisions that are being made and the value that are coming from those decisions. So another way to leverage their expertise is to get them engaged in collaborating, not only with the compliance teams, but with other teams in the organization. So the last thing that I want to talk about, and I have a few minutes here, Mark, I might end a couple minutes early. I, I want to run through uh, not even a handful, just four examples of organizations from different industries that have used their data scientists that in, in implementing governance success. And that's the governance success of their AI models as well as their data models. So the first one on the list is a financial services company and their focus was in, on improving the accuracy of its predictive models. In a healthcare industry, they were looking to reduce bias in their diagnostic their diagnostics that they do as, a, as an organization. In retail, they wanted to make certain that they met stringent regulatory requirements. And in a tech company, they wanted it to just, as in, in general, promote data literacy, data awareness, and data stewardship across the organization. So let's spend a minute on each of these before I turn it back over to Mark to see if, he has, if we have any questions today. Um, Again, thinking in terms of data governance and AI governance, that's been on every slide, even though it's been grayed out. I Initially, I started out putting together this webinar just focused on the data governance, but then since everybody's talking about data governance and AI governance together, I wanted to kind of share results of organizations and things that they've done to, um, to focus on enhancing you know, the, their use of data within the organization for both data governance and AI governance. So first thing for the finance company, they enhanced their data quality models. They implemented rigorous validation checks. They used a data governance framework similar to the non-invasive data governance framework that I've shared in other webinars to kind of standardize and clean and formalize roles across the organization, integrating AI governance uh, to continuously monitor monitor the, the, the way that they're the, the performance of the models within their organization and to get people in the organization to collaborate across teams because they recognized that data quality was not an issue just specifically within one one department or one division within that financial institution they realized that they could learn from each other so they it, they implemented um, scientists they got scientists involved in their governing efforts partially to get them to collaborate across teams to address data quality issues promptly across the organization rather than just specifically within data silos. Here's an example from a healthcare organization. They implemented AI governance. They didn't really refer to it as data governance, but the part of AI governance that focused on ensuring privacy, uh, data privacy for the patients was certainly data governance related. So they got their data scientists involved in implementing AI governance and understanding the, the rules and regula 
uh, regulatory concerns around um, protecting patient privacy. They used governance to eliminate bias. They maintained transparency in their AI models. They documented the heck out of their AI models so that when people used that data, they knew where the data came from. They knew they raised that data confidence level. I talked about the DCL in a webinar several months ago, but raising that data confidence level in the data. The next to last example I wanna share with you is from a retail company that basically they wanted to ach achieve regulatory compliance in what they were doing. They implemented data governance to ensure accurate reporting and audits. They used AI governance to comply with consumer protection laws, making certain that the data that they were sharing was data that they could be sharing with the people that they could be sharing it with, leveraging the data quality standards, um, integrating AI solutions to enhance the fraud detection and prevention, which if you've worked in the retail industry, you know that enhancing fraud detection and preventing fraud is, is very big within the retail space. And the last example I wanna share with you is from a tech company. And this tech company basically fostered a culture around data literacy. They engaged their data scientists and their data stewards and their data subject matter experts and their data owners um, through, uh, through education and training using the tools that were available to them to foster that culture of data literacy um, through the training program for these individuals in the organization. Encourage data stewardship by, I don't always use the word assigning, I, I use the word recognizing more often than assigning, but encouraging data stewardship by recognizing who in the organization already has clear accountability for the data and formalizing those roles. Utilizing AI governance to support ethical usage, implementing data governance frameworks. Again, please go back and look at previous webinars that are part of this series to learn more about data governance frameworks. And there will be more information about that becoming available as well in the near future. So to wrap up here and then send it back to Mark, the things that we talked about over the last 45 minutes or so was looking for what data scientists do and leveraging the things that they're doing and putting a label of governance on it, or at least looking for things that are governance opportunities in the things that data scientists do. We talked about data scientists and data stewards. Are they the same thing? I've seen them start to pop up in operating models, models, but more on the um, on the support side rather than on the business side of the operating model. Integrating governance into the cradle to grave, the data science life cycle or data life cycle as it is. We talked about leveraging the things that data scientists know and that they're aware of to assure that we are compliant and that we are following the regulatory compliance. And then I shared by real quickly going through four different case studies or real world success stories of scientists in the governance uh, in the governance space. So with that, Mark, I feel like I've been talking quite a bit. Maybe we turn it over to these nice folks and see if they have any questions today. Well, yeah, we do have uh, some good questions in uh, in the Q and A, and we've got some wonderful uh, comments in in chat too. And maybe we can address both of those. Uh, one of the questions that we've got in Q&A is, uh, who governs the data used to train ML models? Who governs the data to train AI? I, I, I don't think it's one person. I think we need to make certain that not only do the subject matters or the domain experts in the organization help to make certain it's governed, but we need to also then leverage the scientists themselves who are actively in you know working with these models to assure that the AI models are being are being governed. So I don't know if it's a single person. I think it's going to be um, it's going to be a, a, a people that have different responsibilities associated with that AI model. But the bottom line is, first of all, it's a great question because it's acknowledging the fact that we can't just create AI models without having them governed. Yeah, yeah, I, that's, I kind of really liked it from that perspective as well. Uh, great answer. So um, we have another attendee who asked, uh, and, and I love this question too, uh, what should governance look like when you are the sole scientist, engineer, and analyst? <laughs> 
what should it look like? Well, well, some of it depends on your on the size of your organization. So if you're an organization of 50 people and you're the only person in that role, it's obviously going to look a lot different than if you're in an organization of thousands of people. So Mark, answer, ask the question again real quickly so I make sure I'm addressing what they asked. Yeah, it's uh, what should governance look like when you are the sole scientist, engineer, and analyst? Well, one of the things that I would suggest, if you are the sole person and you understand the need for governance and stewardship, my guess is that you're not going to be the last person within your organization. So making certain that you document the things that you do, document where governance has played a role in the things that you're doing as a scientist, as an analyst, as that person that you mentioned, and make that information available, learn from it, but make that information available to the next person that has that same responsibility. I, so that doesn't that necessarily thought. what it looks like, but it's that's the things that I would do if you are a one person team at this point. I was, I was having that conversation with somebody just the other day and I said, uh, when in doubt, write it out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, good yeah. advice. Um, as a data scientist, do we design our policies from scratch or is there like a standard template or policy to customize? Wow, these are great questions. I don't know if there is a standard policy just coming from the data scientist point of view. I think that you're going to have policy, other policy around your data that doesn't, you don't necessarily have to have specific data scientist policy. I saw an organization that started to do that, but then people started to question whether or not they can't just leverage standards and guidelines and policies that already exist within the organization. So I wouldn't say that we need to start over. Now, if your organization doesn't have any of those things documented, then it might feel like you're starting from scratch. Right. But I'd look first to see, I'm guessing that you have information security policies, that you have privacy policies, that you have access policies and fair usage and data sharing policies and those types of things. Look for what already exists. That's one of the core tenets of being non-invasive in general is let's not create things from scratch. Let's leverage the things that already exist in the organization. And then if there's things that are missing, then maybe they can originate from data science. Mm -hmm. um, what tooling have you seen to enable the scaling out of these governance activities? For example, document generation from annotated software source code or provenance and distributed solutions as with like data mesh or microservices. Wow. That's assuming that I have 30 years of experience <laughs> in, data, in data science, which I've already said that I don't have, that there's nobody used because they didn't even coin the phrase until 2008 or 2006, whatever I said earlier. Um, what tools? I'm really not the best person to answer that question, but by doing some quick searches on the internet or talking to people that have been data scientists, I think you'll get a better answer. Um, from Strictly from a term of data governance, I think those things that I'm going to talk about in next month's webinar, webinar, the data catalog, the glossary, the dictionary, those don't get tossed out the window with AI governance or data governance to support AI governance. We still need to make certain that we have those tools. Those are the ones that I can speak to the best, but those other tools that you mentioned, I'll be transparent with you. If I had a great answer for you, I'd give it to you, but I, I think there are better people to answer that question than myself. Cool, cool. Um, how can we as data scientists or data analysts effectively advocate for inclusion in the data governance team? What are some convincing yet non-invasive arguments we can present <laughs> to our leadership to highlight the value we bring to governance? Well, but it all depends. Does your organization want people on your data governance team to be very knowledgeable about the data and the use of the data and the policies and the rules associated with the data, I would think that it would be an easy sell, not necessarily to have every data scientist as part of your um, as part of your data governance team, but at least having it represented on that team would, would make sense. Because again, we're looking to gain as much knowledge as we can from people that already exist within the organization. So just even bringing the idea up to the team that we're going to include data science or the practice of data science in our meetings, I think that's going to be, that would be a benefit to almost any data governance team. Mm, yeah, I totally agree, Bob. 
Um, I'm, I might not quite say this just right. In the context of model risk management in line with Federal Reserve SR 11-7, um, for, I, I formed for data governance committee. So this person formed a data governance committee. Could this inspire data and AI governance? Not sure. I'm sorry, you're gonna have to ask that one again. Mark. Yeah. In the context of model risk management in line with uh, with a Federal Reserve Code, SR 1170 says uh, they formed a, a governance committee. Could this inspire data and AI governance? Um, certainly. I mean, if you're getting pressure from a federal law or from a law to um, to be very careful or very protective of your data or um, whatever that um, that law is saying that you need to do, you can use, certainly use that. I mean, they use Sarbanes-Oxley as a way to get data governance jump-started in a lot of organizations um, back when data governance just started to be talked about. So I don't see any reason why you wouldn't be able to use that specific standard or that specific regulation. I don't, I'm not familiar with that regulation, but I'm sure yeah, that if either. you look at it closely, that you'll understand that that any regulation is a form of governance. And so if you look to where are the governing pieces, what we need to do to govern our data to be compliant with that standard, um, yeah, you can use it as a way to kind of jumpstart governance within the organization. Again, using Sarbanes-Oxley as kind of the, uh, you know, a past example of some type of regulatory control that instigated everything we're talking about today. I, I love your example of Sarbanes-Oxley, Bob, because I've done exactly that myself um, in, in here in Canada. So Canadian Sarbanes-Oxley and just putting in roles and responsibilities, segregation of duties, all that stuff just feeds so well. And just as true today as it was yesterday. Good. Um, I don't see any other questions. Oh, we got one last one popped in. Uh, are there any course or certifications for AI governance? Are there any specifically associated with AI governance? So I mentioned earlier in the session that I am faculty at Carnegie Mellon and their chief data and AI officer programs. Um, I don't know if that would be, that would be at an executive level and creating the business strategy that would make sense. I would suggest that people come to the AI governance part of the conference in DC in December of the DGIQ East and the AI governance and ask people there or see what you can, what information you can get about potential other places. Plus there's other resources in the field that you can reach out to, to see if there's any way to get a AI governance certification. I know that there will be a lot of conversation about it at the conference in DC. So I suggest sure. people attend that event. Yeah. And that'll be a fantastic event. I, I know it in my heart. So, yep. uh, but thank you, Bob, for this great presentation and Q&A. Uh, that's all we have time for today. Just to remind everybody, we will be posting the recorded webinar and the slides to dataversity.net within a couple of business days. And we will send a follow-up email to let you know the links and any other requested information. So thank you again, everybody, for attending today's webinar. And I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Great, Mark. Thank you very much. Thank you, everybody. We hope to see you next month.